Okay, the thiocyanate ion, SCN minus. So to do the Lewis structure, first of all, we need to know the number of valence electrons. So sulfur's in group 16, so that's six valence electrons. Carbon's in group 14, that has four, and nitrogen is in group 15, so that has five. So we've got six plus four plus five, and that negative there implies there's one more electron. It's a negative ion. Now I'm interested in the pairs of electrons, so I'm gonna divide that by two to give me 10, to give me eight. So I have eight electron pairs to distribute. Now normally, the first atom goes in the center and you put the others evenly around, but in this case, that's not true. It's S, C, and M. There's no hard and fast rules about that. So it's S, C, and N. Join them up with at least one bond to start with. So we've got two pairs of electrons accounted for, eight in total. So I have six more to distribute. Now there's several ways you can do this and the formal charge thing at, at the end of the video will explain why this one is the actual structure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pairs of electrons. Each atom has four uh, electron pairs around it. The stable octet, stable octet, stable octet. And if you want the point, square brackets and a minus. So this is what the molecule looks like. It's linear, 180 degrees. So why is it linear? It's linear because the central atom has two electron domains. So any time a central atom has two electron domains, that part of the molecule is going to be linear. An electron domain, just to recap, is a single, a double, or a triple bond, or a lone pair. This double bond and this double bond, they're going to repel each other. There's four electrons in each of them. So they're going to get as far away from each other as possible, which is on opposite sides of that central carbon. So it's linear, 180 degrees. Let's look at the dipoles, the bond dipole first of all, and then the molecular dipole. So in order to work out dipoles, you've got to go to the electronegativity table. Electronegativity is a measure of how much uh, an atom attracts the pair of electrons in the bond. Fluorine has the highest electronegativity of four. And so we've got sulfur at 2.6. Carbon also at 2.6 and nitrogen at 3.0. So in terms of the bond dipoles, you can see that the sulfur carbon bond, they both have the same electronegativity. So those electrons are going to be shared equally. So there is no bond dipole here. But for the carbon and the nitrogen, the electronegativity is different. And that means the electrons are going to be slightly towards the nitrogen, only a little, because that's quite a small difference. So this does have a very weak uh, dipole, a very small dipole, if you want. So you could draw in the bond dipole like that. That's fine. Now, what about the molecular dipole? Well, to be honest, that's going to be the same thing. The molecular dipole is also pointing this way. Don't forget that the plus uh, means that the carbon's going to end up being a little bit positive and the arrow end is the negative end of the dipole, a little bit negative. So no dipole here for the bond, a small dipole there, and overall the dipole of this molecule is going to be towards the nitrogen. Don't get that confused with the charge. The iron has a negative charge, but it also has a dipole as well. Okay, let's look at some alternate structures for the thiocyanate ion. There's the, the real one here, but I'm going to draw two more and we'll do the formal charge to show that this one is the preferred one. All right then, so the formal charge is the number of valence electrons. So in sulfur, that's six. Minus two for the covalent bonds gives me four minus the number of electrons in those lone pairs, so that comes out at zero. For carbon, four valence electrons, 
minus four bonds, no lone pairs, that's gonna be zero. And so this must be minus one. Don't forget, if you sum the formal charges, it has to equal the charge on the iron. I'll do the rest quick. Okay, so there's two rules for formal charge, at least in IB chemistry. Zeros are good. So two zeros here, just one there and two there. So this one cannot be right. Uh, if that isn't enough to determine which structure is the, the correct one, then the most electronegative atom has to have uh, the negative formal charge. So of these three, nitrogen is the most electronegative. That has a negative one charge and there it's zero. So that confirms indeed that this is the preferred structure.